All right, today here at EMTV Review is an interesting one because we have the new Eagle transmission and no, I wasn't an early release. So I've seen like 50 just glowing reviews of this product. Like, oh man, you gotta have it. But I'm like, I'm gonna answer, do you really want it? And what is the compatibility with e-bikes? I'm gonna do a lot of full power shifting and give you the, the full nitty gritty report on this group's compatibility with e-bikes and is it something you want? All right, Eagle transmission, not cheap, 2,200 bucks. For, for this setup and you compare that to SRAM XX which is about 2000 and XO is about 1600 which is what we see on a lot of e-bikes but really what's appropriate for e-bikes is GX you know I always profess GX and that's about $900 so huge almost double the price of GX if uh, if you were gonna jump to this they redesigned the cassette 10 to 52 they have the, the derailleur is where all the money went meaning they really designed the heck out of that derailleur. It's way more robust. And the way it's hung is, you know, when you have UDR compatibility, then you could just clasp it on to where the UDR goes and it's fully enclosed. So what, what they're really trying to get aside from a more robust derailleur is a more robust hanging system. So no, none of this bendy, bendy stuff, okay? The shifter is beautiful as well. I kind of like it. I've always dreamed of that time when we'd get push button shifting. You know, once we got electronic, not, not, not a toggle just because, you know, it's good transitionary or what we're used to. What is it and why is it significant? What they did is they stiffened up the, the, the chassis, they stiffened up the mounting, they reworked the, the cassette so it has more consistent gearing and had at it. So I'm, I'm just quickly demonstrate for you guys. A little louder than before, huh? So the main thing you'll notice here is the shifting is slower, especially under power. It's not as instant as XX and XO. And that's something I've complained about. Uh, the shifting on those is too quick. It's too quick for an e-bike. You know, if you were completely out of power, uh, you could just shift anywhere, but with power, you want to shift at the clearly defined points of the cassette. Uh, and so this is what it does. This is also to some extent what Shimano does. That's why I prefer Shimano so much more to the old SRAM XO uh, because it's more deliberate in shifting. It's slower shifting, more deliberate, less of that popping and cracking noise. So when you're shifting or your buddy, your buddy's shifting beside you with, with the e-bike, when you hear that pow, pow, crack, that's not good. That's basically tantamount to breaking the chain or bending the cassette. Uh, so that's that's a wrong shift. So here, I've been using this a while because I have a new prototype bike, soon to be released. I couldn't do a review on this transmis transmission, but I've had a really good experience with it. Uh, not, no, no popping, no uh, kind of exploding, exploding cogs. Just always slower, more deliberate shifts. So it's been good, and I've been doing a lot of shifting under power, and these are. 50 newton meter bike, so mid mid powered bikes. This is a Patsua Ride 60, and you know you can shift under power because it waits until it's ready before it executes that shift. Now, on my other bike, I've been doing a lot of you know just it was completely silent in the beginning, especially on the bigger rings. But then it, it then it starts to generate noise, especially on the downshift. It's really weird. Before it was louder on the upshift. This new, this new Eagle transition, louder on the downshift. It does better with power, power shifting. That's for sure, that's for dang sure. Are you supposed to shift with power? I think you wanna avoid it uh, because you're just gonna wear this thing out. In e-bikes, it's unavoidable because you're always assisted. You always have power, uh, especially when you need it, right? That's the big dichotomy of, of biking is when you need to shift is when the going gets rough and you have to let off for that second. So it's a tough one. Um, so definitely you can shift more. Now, is it, is it completely uh, great for e-bikes? 
The fact that you can shift a little more power is great, but this thing is not really made for e-bikes, meaning it still has 12 speeds. You still have that thin cassette, you still have that thin chain. And what they did with the chain is they, they made the top uh, kind of uh, more material on the top. But tell you what, that's what I have on my, uh, <laughs> on my bike. All my XX1 bikes and XO bikes, when they break, which they do quite quickly uh, before a thousand miles, because I always ride on turbo, is I replace them with GX, GX or NX. So my NX chain kind of looks like this. So, you know, pretty good, but should you go out and get one for your e-bike because your Levo drivetrain wore out? I say no, heck no. <laughs> Too much money and you're not getting a lot of benefit anyway. It's bling for sure. You know, it's still better to get a GX system or NX and really my, 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 my preference is SLX or XT you know Shimano uh, but definitely definitely a good step and I'm gonna show you a lot of power shifting that I did uh, and this bike and uh, you know as it wears out as it wears down it starts to make noise as well so I think there's wear and tear involved you know is this gonna be more durable than than XO or, or GX I would say because it doesn't force the shift it definitely is but there's it's not made for it there's just too many speeds everything's so thin what I really want for an e-bike is a 10-speed or a 9-speed, meaning then you have the room to make the cassette way thicker uh, or, or the chain thicker. Shimano has that link light system. We'll see what it's all about. They made a cassette so heavy, but uh, for good reason. They want that thing uh, you know, as meaty as possible. This thing, when you get it from the factory, the multi-shift is not on, but I would say, because they don't really want it on, I turn it on for all my bikes. But I would say, turn it on. Because now you have no risk of shifting too fast because you have a system that waits for it. So maybe this is one benefit of, uh, of this transmission. You can do this multi-shift safely, given that the system is designed to wait until it's ready anyway. There you go. All right, let me do some full power shifts here. It's about a 10% climb. And I'm shifting, down shifting, up shifting for no reason, just because I'm on full power. And the down shifts or getting to the bigger cogs are more quiet than the up shifts. This new transmission really cradles and waits for the cogs, the cassettes to be in place and then shifts. So it's very good at that. On a downshift, I think it's more, you hear a thunk as it, as it uh, drops into the lower, smaller cogs. On the smallest cogs, there is more noise on the downshift. As it gets to the big ones, it's more quiet, meaning less impact, less friction. So definitely, it can handle power shifts better than the old systems. Seems like the next step. Shimano SLX, XT, they, it does handle power shifts better than SRAM, and this one handles power shifts better. So should you go out and get one for your e-bike? I would say no. This definitely handles power shifts better, but really, it wasn't really made for the power shifting of an e-bike. You're just gonna wear this thing out. Uh, I did notice some degradation over the two weeks of testing. What used to be super crisp was starting to make more noise. So you don't wanna wear this cassette out and this chain. And it's a $600 cassette, very, very pricey. And it's, it's better, you're better off getting a $100 cassette and replacing it more often. And I think in the future, as you get lower price points, so this will become more attractive, but really for e-bikes, I'm waiting for the day where we have less speeds, 10 speeds, thicker cassettes, and thicker chains. Thanks a ton.